Okay, hey my friends, welcome to this chess video. And once again, we will try and test our positional understanding. It's a very interesting game. It begins d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. We have a Nimzo Indian on the chessboard. It's probably the most popular move. Queen to c2, d5, takes, takes. Bishop g5, h6, takes, and takes. And this is a position here that I would like us to consider. As in the other videos, my friend, I'll give you three scenarios. The first is that you would like to break the pin against your knight here. And you think it's likely that they will be opposite side castling. Therefore, you plan to play triple zeros. Trying to gain some initiative in the centre because you are now threatening to take on d5. You calculate that it's not possible for black to play a tempo gaining move like bishop to f5 because you'll simply play queen a4. After knight to c6 you can simply take the pawn anyway. And if black tries to defend with something like c6, a position like this, well, again, you can simply take the pawn. And this should be good for white. So you work out that in order for black to defend against your initiative, he has to play bishop to e6. After which you plan e4, renewing your attack, attack here on the d5 point and trying to open up the position while the black king is still in the centre. So this is plan A, opposite side castling and trying to gain some initiative in the centre. Plan B is that you think it is likely that because of the pressure on the centre, from the knight and on the c7 point from the queen that it's likely that black will play sooner well, sooner or later the move c6. You therefore plan a minority attack a3, b4 trying to create some weakness against this queenside pawn structure. To gain a tempo for your idea, well, a3, putting the question to this bishop, and you evaluate that it's unlikely that the bishop will go to a5, because of b4, bishop b6, and e3, and this bishop is locked out of the game. Therefore, you calculate that it's more than likely that black will take here on c3, after which you plan to retake with the queen and simply continue normal development. c3, 9f3, bishop e2, kingside castling, and then launching forth your minority attack. So this is plan B, the minority attack against this queenside pawn structure. Plan C is that you wish to reinforce and eventually undermine and control the centre. So in a similar way, you plan to move a3, putting the question to this bishop. You again feel that it's unlikely that it will go to, go to a5 because it will be eventually locked out of the game, as we have discussed previously. Therefore, it's more than likely that black will take here on c3. But rather than taking with the queen, you plan on taking with the b pawn. And then plan to bolster the center with e3, knight f3, say bishop e2, kingside castling, preparing an eventual c4, where you will undermine the black center. And this preponderance of pawns that you will have will give you some lasting advantage. So this is your idea with 
Plan C, reinforcing and eventually undermining the center. Okay, my friends, have a, have a think about this position if you like. Pause the video and see which one of these respective plans meets the criteria of the position. The game itself was played in 1981, and with the white pieces, it's Danish chess legend Bent Larsen. And with the black pieces, is American chess legend Yasser Seriwan. Now, the correct idea was to go in for the minority attack, and for this reason, Bent Larsen played the move a3. Let us take a look at this idea of opposite side castling, just for a moment. If we have Long castling. Well, after bishop takes on c3, queen takes c3, black can take here on f2, and in order for us to get our pawn back, we've got to take on c7. But after black plays castling, take a look at the respective safety of the black king in comparison to the white king. We've created an open file leading right down to the white king side, or the white king position, sorry, whereas the black king is relatively safe. It's a very, very dangerous prospect, this idea, and it really gives white a disadvantage in respect of king safety. So let's go back to the game. A3 was played by Larson. Bishop takes. And he takes with the queen. Let's take a look at the idea of taking with the b pawn. Again, what have we done? We've released the pressure our queen had on c7 by blocking the c file. And what is more, after black castles, and we try our idea of e3, it's simply too slow because black can simply play. C5. We cannot play a move like C4 because of the pressure against the D4 point. Black will simply, simply take here on D4. So this idea of making a structural alternation with the idea of reinforcing and eventually undermining the center is simply too slow for this type of position. The best move was queen takes on C3. It's castling, e3, c6. So normal developing moves. And a5. And black does not really appreciate that the opening of the a file will really help white's idea of attacking this queenside pawn structure. b4, a takes, a takes. And the A-file is open, which can only really benefit white. Queen D6. And some indirect pressure here on this backward pawn. And here it is, the minority attack. White will either create an isolated pawn here on D5, or... Probably worse than that, trying to create double pawns here by inducing black to take here. Or there will be a backward pawn here on c6. Rooks were exchanged. You can see how the presence of the ice maiden here on the 7th rank, putting pressure on this structure is absolutely telling, even at this early stage of the game. And this is a fatal mistake, passively trying to defend, because it allows white to play the excellent knight to e5. And the knight cannot be taken, because black simply loses a piece because the queen is tied to the defense of this rook. And therefore, Yasser was forced to play bishop takes on e2, knight takes, rook comes to d8. 
and you can see that the minority attack has reaped its rewards. There's a backward sea pawn here, and a hungry rook, a queen, and a knight which can attack it. Knight to d7. And after bishop to h5, the pawn falls. And from here on, it's very, very difficult for black. Just show you some moves. And eventually the pawn fell, and, well, white was able to convert the advantage. So the correct idea, as I've said, was this minority attack. Plan A was too dangerous because of the relative safety of her king, and Plan C was far too slow. I must tell you, my friends, I never actually got this correct. I chose Plan C. It appeared to me to be the best idea, but it was it's simply too slow. Perhaps you yourselves have done better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed relating it to you, and I sincerely hope that you got something from it. Suffice to say, as I always do, I wish you well with your own chess. Take care, my friends, and goodbye. Bye.